Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Line with your host, Dr. Daniel Cameron. In tonight's episode, Dr. Cameron will be talking about the case of a 26 year old man who was misdiagnosed with monoarthritis after his clinical evaluation overlooked the possibility of Lyme disease as being a potential cause. The case was described by Marcellus and colleagues in a paper entitled Lyme disease, a probably underdiagnosed cause of monoarthritis. Good evening, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for joining us and, and talking about this case. And thank you, Darlene, for leading the discussion. So can you tell us a little bit about the, this man's symptoms? Okay, this is a 26-year-old man who had acute knee pain. And as most people know, um, his, from a history perspective, is the in Lyme, Connecticut, there was a housewife um, and mother, Polly Murray, who first noted that her kids, some other kids in the neighborhood had swollen knees and painful knees. And so you would think from those early observations that it would be relatively easy to recognize this type of arthritis in a, in a child or a young adult. So this, uh, this case, there was knee pain that was occurring for a year uh, when he began walking for an extended period of time. And what they did was they looked back over time and, and said, oh, well, at one point, he had an MRI in the past that showed a large joint effusion. The uh, way Lyme works is it's classically some fluid that builds up in the joint. There's a, you know, we're used to having a bone cartilage cartilage and then bone, but in between the cartilage is a, is a layer called synovial layer that accumulates fluid in Lyme. Uh, it's enough fluid that sometimes you see a bulging knee. Sometimes they have to put a needle in to drain it. Mm -hmm. And so this was a great case that in hindsight that should have been noticed. Uh, they should have been considering Lyme disease. So why the author wrote about this is that the writer said, well, you know, they didn't diagnose Lyme disease uh, when they first presented it with that effusion. And then later, four months after the first time that, of the joint effusion, the doctors looked at him again, and they said, yep, there's still a persistent joint effusion. There's, that is, there's still fluid in there. And now there's some thickening of that synovium. That's that sac between the cartilage. Uh, and then there's some lymph nodes in the uh, behind the knee and some enhancement of the muscle. So were they diagnosed? No. Um, so, uh, you know, the, that's what they were talking about is in hindsight, you know, there were some clear indicators of Lyme disease. And uh, in this case, yes, uh, he still presented with, the, uh, with uh, Lyme disease uh, with acute knee pain. And so it, and he had actually, excuse me, he had a t actually tested a uh, positive for, for Lyme, right, uh, prior, but they, that didn't come out in the initial evaluation? Yeah, correct, because, uh, you know, the author focused in on uh, recall because uh, it was not clear if it was the doctor that didn't ask the right questions or the doctor didn't explore it or did the patient not give enough information. But yes, uh, sometimes it gets pretty simple. You know, they, you think looking at this chart that if somebody's 26 actively walking, has a positive blood test and a swollen knee, you'd think that, oh, well, that should be an easy diagnosis. Uh, but this author reminded you that even with what we know about Lyme disease is that simple cases, easy to diagnose cases can get, can get overlooked. You know, I think you often, or, uh, or individuals often think that, believe that there has to be several joints involved when Lyme disease is, is the culprit. Um, but in this case, it was just one joint. So that, do you see that very frequently or? I see both combinations. Uh, quite often the swollen knee, you know, just one knee, you don't get as often the, the swollen knee both sides. But that same tissue called synovial tissue can be in other locations. So in the hip, we, we call that bursa. Uh, 
So that's called bursitis, but it's the same tissue. So sometimes you'll get people where that's swollen, and that's painful. That same uh, tissue is in, in the area where the back connects to the hip. It's, that's called sacroiliac joint. Sacrum because of the sacrum back. And in that case, they call it sacroiliitis, which is still synovitis. And again, that tissue soaks up in the in like the elbows, uh, uh, various other parts of the body. And so lots of times we'll get pain in different parts of the body, just not always the knee. It's not always constant. It can be migratory, but the constant in all of it is that tissue gets inflamed, gets painful, and sometimes it's swollen, but you can't count on it being swollen, but you can certainly count on it being inflamed. And what you do sometimes is that if you palpate the joint, you can actually get to that synovial sac and find a bunch of tender spots. And that helps you with diagnosis, even if there's no fluid in the, in the joint. Now, the authors point out that there, there was no evidence of septic arthritis. Do you, would you like to address that a little bit? Well, septic arthritis is, is something that, uh, where you actually have a bacterial infection like a staphylococcal, streptococcus infection in the joint, and it's very destructive. Uh, it happens rather quickly. Uh, so some of the authors that have looked at the septic arthritis and Lyme arthritis uh, say there is some confusion. You know, there, there are uh, the questions of should one put a needle in the joint? Um, now, there have been people with uh, Lyme arthritis who can't walk very well, they, they limp along. But the reason it's often an emergency and often ends up in the ER is because you just don't know if it's a, that bacterial infection or Lyme disease. Now, sometimes uh, it's easier to call it Lyme arthritis if there's a whole range of other issues. That's why these neurologic issues, neuropsych issues, uh, lightheaded, you know, fatigue, uh, they will help with the diagnosis. In this case, the author only mentioned the uh, joint pain. You know, usually what I do is I go back and say, well, by the way, you know, you have that rheumatologic problem, but what are the other issues? Tell me the whole story. So this author said, go back into history and find some clues. But what I would do is go back in the history and ask this questions these questions of what other symptoms this patient had. And, and, and could you address a little bit about the um, importance of getting a timely treatment for, for Lyme disease? This, this young man waited almost a year. Well, timely treatment is uh, important. The Columbia NIH trials, um, they were sick uh, for uh, an average of nine years before they got uh, treated in the trials. So, of course, they did, didn't do very well in the trials, but um, the delay is always seen as a factor. I had done a study uh, uh, once uh, looking at people with a positive Lyme by the IG Western blot, and I found the same thing, that the, these people that were failing treatment, or at least they're failing the, these four-week treatment cycles, were those that had treatment delays. And uh, so I think that you think that that uh, would be a, important for a timely diagnosis, uh, but uh, that doesn't happen uh, often enough. And we can't even be sure all the time if it's a doctor that isn't asking the right questions or a doctor that comes up with a different diagnosis, or is it because the patient's not giving all the information? Sometimes it may be that the patient doesn't have enough time to present it. And sometimes the patient isn't aware that a bunch of unrelated things are all uh, clues for Lyme disease. So what's, what's the, the message you think that from this, from this case report for clinicians? Well, I had written an article called Consequences of Lyme Disease, where I found uh, that average of two-year delay. But so many of those cases were relatively easy when you look back on it. You know, there were rashes that were overlooked. Uh, 
there were people that had a spinal tap where the spinal tap didn't show up and the doctor said, well, I won't treat. And of course they eventually got sick enough. Uh, then there are people who had uh, a swollen knee where they said it must be uh, uh, damaged from, uh, from some kind of sport activity to let that go. And so uh, the reminder in this one is that you might be thinking of a complicated illness, but uh, over half of the people in that trial were pretty simple uh, and straightforward. And uh, I find that if one, as a doctor, asks more questions, and as a patient, just look at the whole story, communicate the whole story, it will help uh, cut down uh, the time it takes to get treatment, and it should improve the success rate. It also should be easier to treat someone if they have timely treatment. Well, thank you for talking to us about this about this case report. And the um, viewers can can go and learn more about some of the other other cases involving Lyme arthritis on your blog. You've written actually quite extensively about it, so um, they can head on over to DanielCameronMD.com to uh, read more about the topics. Thank you, Dr. Cameron. And good evening.